What's up YouTube? Welcome to another episode of Ryan Belt 360. Today I am doing the Hutch Mod with Driven Diesel's kit. Uh, we're getting rid of those screens in the tank and putting a little inline filter in the tank and then while I'm in there I'll do the uh, Harpoon Mod. So Captain Ahab, pull up your seat and take a watch. Okay, so here's what's up with the Hutch Mod, right? We got a kit, comes with bracket for a filter housing and a filter housing you've got a water separator filter we're going to put in there that's a little extra um, precaution the purpose for this filter is because we are going to eliminate inside the sending unit the two screens that are in here that get clogged up or gummed up that cause a lot of issues all the way to um, codes that say you might have a lack of oil the injectors when these can get clogged uh, you lose power smoky conditions so this will eliminate that and then i want to have to go back into the tank again um unless the sending unit goes i ordered the kit with extra fuel line just in case because i'm doing it on a saturday afternoon uh, auto parts store is going to close i always want to be prepared and i also ordered the kit with these fuel valves um the reason i ordered them with that they're great to help with changing the filter but also if i'm ever parked in a dicey area i can turn the fuel off if somebody tries to steal this uh, they might not get too far, might not know what to look for. So almost like a little security system too. Um, we've got a couple fittings that go in the filter housing, barb fittings that are gonna go to the tank. So I'm gonna go through the instructions here, try to get started on taking this apart, cutting the pipes to the right length so the reach of the sender reaches the bottom of the tank. Um, but that's it, driven diesel, touch my kit. Okay, so the goal here is you got to get to your sending unit. You can do it two ways. You can take the bed off or drop the tank. Since this is a relatively rust-free truck, I decided that uh, probably best to just take the bed off. I only had an issue with two bed bolts. I had to weld a nut on top, and then because somebody used carriage bolts on this uh, when they put the fifth wheel hitch on. So got those out, lifted the bed off. Now I'm ready to get into the sending unit here. I um, blew it out with the air gun first to get any dirt and dust out of there, clean that up, put a little penetrating oil on it for a little bit. That way we can disconnect our fuel lines and start to get this, um, the locking ring out, but uh, it should be fairly easy. Um, you know, it took about half hour to get the bed off. Like I said, rust free, your situation might be different uh i've grew up in the northeast so i know how trucks can get underneath and usually you probably sold your truck by now if it's from the northeast to get rid of those uh weight reduction mod with all the rust you have in there so we'll get this uh sending unit out next I'm gonna start here unplug the sending unit wire that's just uh, one of your kind of push it in push that tab down and pull that apart these luckily you don't need a tool on this this is an o2 i don't know if it's different on the earlier ones um, i wiggled them before but you should be able to just push that blue should be Ugh. should be able to push that blue thing in there i need to be cleaned a little better <laughs> So just a lot of Western dust clogged in there. Had to really blow it out. Okay. Still got to use the uh, little hose pick here. Push that in, remove that. Now I'm ready to start attacking this locking ring. So the trick with the locking ring is to hopefully use a strap wrench in my lock. I've never worked, but you want to start Hitting the tab on one side and go to the other because it does twist as it undoes, comes out. So I'll go back here, kind of helps. I'm actually using a heavy duty uh, paint scraper. Tighten the straps too on this tank, anyway.
And then we're gonna carefully pull this out. Watch that O-ring down in there. Look at that. The heart and soul of the fuel tank. Golly. Good old boy. Thirsty boy. Ugh. Okay, so an important part here, uh, when we remove this, put in the new pipe piece they gave us, um, we gotta measure the length from the flange to the bottom of this umbrella that's at the bottom of the tank. So we wanna make sure that's at the bottom of the tank so we get the most out of here um, when we put it back in. Um, so you're gonna measure from this flange. That is 13 and 5 eighths inches. For the metric countries out there, that is 34 and a half millimeter centimeters. America. One day we'll be there. Centimeters. So now we're gonna carefully remove this umbrella piece from here, noting how we've measured it. We'll loosen that clamp. Um, it's not uncommon for these to break off in the tank. So we got lucky. Um, so I'm taking that umbrella out. Next thing I gotta do is cut the clamp here from the mixing valve, which is coming off of here as well. So I need to get some cutters. All right, so with your cutters, we're gonna cut that clamp off. Whoa. Get that out of there. Get out of there. Get out of town, mister. Take that out completely. Hopefully that'll nice and loose. Remove that. Come on, you fudge. I'm pulling and twisting. There we go. And now I can remove this from here. Voila. Don't mind the banging outside. So, fun fact, somebody's already been in here, took this all out. Uh, there were no screens inside of this. They did the filter delete mod, but you can see there was some crud up in there. So now that that's all off, uh, we're ready to put the new parts on. Um, be extremely careful with this. Um, I'm actually working on another video right now where someone broke the ceramic piece. Actually, I broke the ceramic piece on a Ford F750 and the dealership wants $1,100 for the sending unit, but I found a $28 part that will replace this. Um, so stay tuned for that video because it would also apply. They use the same sender since the mid eighties on Ford with the same resistance values. So um, wait for that video to release. I had to wait for a part to come in to finish that one. So we're ready to assemble now. Okay, so I gotta admit the instructions here are very big. Um, and then I have to go by pictures and by reading, you know, it tells me New fuel return line, part number TKO50290. Uh, parts don't have numbers on them or anything. Um, there's not a picture correlating it, so it could be better, could be worse. Much Could have been much worse. So um, maybe even a sticker on here. That can be a pain sometimes to take the sticker off, especially when you're putting it in a fuel tank. But uh, So I also got to remove this clamp and line as well. So, I'm learning as I go with this one. But I gotta pay attention to these pictures now and the uh, instructions and kind of figure it out. So this is where it gets kind of confusing, right? You see, figure five, I took that valve off. Then we see here where I've got my straight compression fitting and the umbrellas back in, but then I go to six. So I get it. I go back and edit videos and stuff. Um, but just keep in mind the order of how to do this. So I'm removing the screen out of here. Use a flathead screwdriver to pry it out. 
So luckily with it, your pickup and your return line are different size diameter. So um, I've got this compression fitting. I gotta get that back on here. And then we gotta tighten that down snug. So tightens that up. Got all sorts of no noises going on here at the shop right now. Whew. Still not enough. Snug. There we go, starting to grab. That's good. So you want to make sure that ferrule inside is in straight and then this goes up as far as it can into that middle fitting where 5 eighths wrench is on. And then you want to keep that one centered while you tighten the other so that creates that compression lock. And they had one that came pre-assembled but I'm going to check it anyway. Okay, they're stronger than I am. That's good. That's good too. So now we've got that extension on there and that's where this is ultimately gonna go back on to set our depth. Um, it did have in the steps, I need to run a drill through here because there is a collar in there. So at the factory, they can't set it too deep. So I need to run a drill bit through there to clear that out so I can slide it up and down and set the depth to where I need it to be. So as for the instructions, I'm gonna get a 3 8 drill bit, some vice grips. I'm gonna go in there carefully and ream that out. So that will get that little collar I just showed you. We're just running that in there manually. I'm gonna go run it back. And then we should be able, so some junk fell out. That gets that collar out of there. I'm going to clean that out with the air gun and then we should be able to slide that on here better. Might have to do a little more. Yeah. All right. So we were instructed to put Part number TK-052912-HBUS. Okay, that's the curved piece. Um, can only fit on the return. So um, assuming what I did does, it's a 5212-HBUS-HBUS-HBUS-HBUS-HBUS-HBUS-HBUS-HBUS-HBUS-HBUS-HBUS-HBUS-HBUS-HBUS-HBUS-HBUS-HBUS-HBUS-HBUS-HB
And I just dropped WGN02SS. It rolled under something here. Oh, lovely. Got it. Okay, guys, I found WGN02SS. Thank God. I'm not mad. I used to work with a team of engineers and it's difficult sometimes. So the goal here is I got that on. Now I gotta set that depth again to 13 and 5 eighths. So I've got a little ways to go. And I might even have to cut this piece shorter if it bottoms out here which is a good learning experience. So, we'll all be danged. Uh, 13 and three quarters. Okay, so I'm gonna take this back off and use my cutters. Modify that, and now we should be able to set that depth a little farther. My WGNO2SS fell again. So you want to be careful. I don't want to bend this and screw it up. So let's see if I cut enough off. Um, oh boy. Measure. That's what we're looking for. So, did we get, all right, 13 and a half, good. So I cut enough off to where I can pull it down again. Just a smidge. A smidge is an eighth of an inch, by the way. Okay, so we moved it a smidge. quite a smidge yet. And we're there. So now we're gonna tighten down our WGN 02 SS. And the SS fans were super smooth. Just kidding. Stainless mother radio edit steel. Bone swar. So we gotta make sure that one's tight because if that's loose and there's a suction issue there, uh, you technically won't be picking up fuel for that whole amount if that's not on there proper and tight. So we're gonna make sure we get that snug, like a pug in a rug. All right, not twisting or anything uncomfortable. I've got that tightened down, I've got that tightened down. So this should complete the sending unit here. Okay, so with the Harpoon Mod, you've got your filler neck that goes into the tank. And in the tank, there's a PVC pipe that goes in. Um, the pipe goes in uh, several inches into the tank. And then when the fuel level comes up, it goes up that pipe and that's what makes your nozzle click. So what we're gonna do is shorten that pipe and then that way more fuel can come in before it hits that pipe in the neck and then comes up. Let me uh, get a VO down in the tank. Okay, so if you see in there, I'm doing this with my phone, this is dangerous. Um, you've got that PVC pipe that comes in and we're gonna be cutting the one that comes in on an angle. All right, so I got in the tank with these here cutters. They were enough to let me cut one piece and I said, screw it, I want a little more. Then I can fill up and drive farther. Uh, as it was with this, you know, on the highway I've been getting 18 miles per gallon and I go about 300 miles comfortably before I fill up. And usually my bladder fills up before the fuel tank gets empty, but that's another story. So 
We did that. That's the harpoon mod. Uh, just these pair of cutters can get you a couple more gallons in that tank and a little more range. All right, so here's what we look like after we cut and modified those. So now it's time to get the fuel cinder back in here, made sure my surface was clean around that. So it's a little different to put in now. And we got all this extra length and girth. Um, so that's gonna go in carefully there. Swing it around there. Now what I'm checking for while I do this is making sure that that filter that umbrella at the bottom hits the tank before the cinder hits the lock in ring. So we were looking for that uh, umbrella to hit the bottom of the tank and it'd be a little springy and I've got that. So we set that, that's where that measurement of the 13 and 5 eighths that I had was critical to setting this back in. Now I'm gonna get this lock ring started. Um, it's crooked. These can be difficult at times, just like any bolt. Sometimes you gotta feel it backwards uh -huh. to get it started forward. Nope. Son of a bee sting. So when I do stuff like that, I gotta check that seal doesn't come loose. All right. This can be a pain. I'm actually wishing the tank was out right now. Sometimes they gotta be put back in the way they came out. So after a little more uh, hammer persuasion, we got that locking ring back in and the sending unit is secure. So now it's time to get onto that fuel filter side of things. All right, so now we're gonna get the uh, fittings installed here. Uh, as I discussed, I got the fuel valves as well, so I gotta put them in line. They are pipe threads, so they're gonna go in line with where the JIC connectors go. So, uh, as per the instructions, we're gonna set it up this way. So, I have these valves, so I need to make sure they get put in there as well. So, what happens is these go in first, then the barb fittings go on second because they are a JIC style fitting. And then we can push our fuel line right onto that. Um, these valves were an option, as I said before, I decided to do them. So, So, uh, doesn't really have any in the instructions for these optional fuel valves, um, but that's okay. Uh, I was just about to do Teflon tape and then I realized it's probably not the best idea. I actually have this Loctite stick and it's Teflon goo. Uh, probably work better in this application than tape. But, uh, so we're gonna put that on there. That's coming off. All right, it's just like chapstick or glue stick. Did you ever put glue stick on your lips in school as a kid? I got kicked out of public school, so that's okay. 
So we're gonna do that one. We're gonna put that in first. This is the only plausible place in the kit it can go. So that one's gonna go there. And we're gonna get our JIC fitting, three quarter pipe to JIC fitting next. And it's gonna go there. And then ooh la la, we don't need this on the JIC cause that's like a compression style there. So we're gonna just throw that on there like so. And then I will get the proper wrenches and turn that as an assembly. The weakest link tightens first. I want to make sure I get that valve facing up because I don't have much room for a filter with this down there. All right. So that's one. We'll get the other one in there too. So repeat, same thing. And then you've got plugs that will go in there. Okay, so we've got those fittings installed. Now we just gotta put our plugs in here. Now we'll get that plug in. Again, snug as a pug in a rug, tighten it down. Good leverage with this one, so I'm gonna be careful so I don't crack the housing and choke up on it. Repeat X2. Three eighths Allen gets you in there. All right, so that completes that filter housing. You've got your valves on it and your plugs. So fuel goes in, comes out there through the filter and voila. At this point, we are now ready to put that filter housing onto the three studs. And then we are going to set that on there like such. We'll see, okay. Then we've got three lock nuts we want to use and three flat washers. And so we get uh, one, two, oh, lovely. Well, I brought a socket over, but I'm going to need to get a wrench. Get those hands started. Oh boy. That's okay. All right. All right, I will snug those down. It might take a while, there's some long threads. Then we will repeat three, two more times after this one. Okay, yeah. So you get the drill. Tighten down your lock nuts. So the filter housing is secure to the filter housing bracket. So we finally got those snugged down. The next step is to put the four inch bolts through the top of the housing. Just double check. Those are the four inch ones. Make sure the other one's the same, and then the other one's shorter. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, quarter inch washers as well. There you go. So we will let that hang over the edge. One step closer to the edge. All right, all right. So the next step now is to use figure 12 as a guide and find a spot on the frame where to mount that. So we're there now. Uh, I'm gonna get underneath the truck and hopefully find a good spot to mount that.
So I'm here on the creeper. Um, I have a four door short bed truck with six speed manual, four wheel drive. And for me, what I found on the frame, the front of the fuel tanks here, transfer cases there. I decided to put the bracket right there. Um, reason I did that, <clears throat> I tried on this side. You can see you got a cab mount here. And then I have this bolt here. The bracket actually did fit between here. Uh, however, when I put it there, the barb fitting was very close to this shield on the fuel tank. So I didn't want to cut this shield, so I moved it to the front. Uh, it's by those plugs. I ended up moving the wire harness behind there, and I will add a little extra wire loom protector around it so it doesn't vibrate through. But this is where I found on my truck with the four-door short bed setup to fit the best to mount that bracket. So now I'm gonna tighten these bolts down. So I got the bracket turned down then I decided to uh, take the bolt out of this bracket, put all the wires behind the bracket um, by swinging them around. I didn't even have to unplug them. I was able to feed them around, but then I will be able to twist them around, put them back into this bracket on the backside on the inside of the frame to keep them away from rubbing on the housing. So as you can see, they're back in there on the back side of it. I'll be able to put the bolt back into the bracket down here and they are out of the way. And that gives me more room for the fuel line as well. Okay, so at this point we're ready to hook our fuel line up to here and go to run it through the frame. Um, this side, I'm gonna just slide it over the sending unit and use two, two hose clamps and then we are going to run that to the filter housing and that gets one of those spring clamps onto that barb fitting that's on there. So I'll show you that real quick. So I'm having a hell of a time sliding that over the barb on the pickup. So I read that in the reviews. I'm gonna try warm this up with a heat gun. Uh, they recommend in the instructions even putting it in boiling water. So I'm going to heat the end of this hose up in hopes that it slides over there. Definitely helped. So those reviews weren't kidding. That wasn't an easy task. So I'm just enough past the barb where I can get one of these hose clamps on there to keep it past the barb. But uh, I had to heat that up with a heat gun for a little while. If you can hear it in my voice, it kind of took a lot out of me. <laughs> So now I'll get a clamp on one's, both sides of that, um, the barb and this. The recommendation is to plastic bag and a zip tie. Uh, I'm probably gonna get an old fuel filter, cut the end off, crimp it over and put it in there just to keep it safe. So as you can see, we got our clamps in there. They're tightened down, the barb's in the middle of them. So now I'm ready to run the rest of the fuel line to the uh, filter housing. Okay, so we ran our fuel line to the barb fitting, put that spring clip, uh, spring clamp on it. Um, I've got some zip ties here. I did a few down the frame rail. I uh, did it to the brake line. Um, I got these, recently was turned on to these grip lock zip ties. Uh, super heavy duty and they're actually reusable. You bend that back pull that tab out and then you can undo them. They've got this rubber inside, so they grip around whatever you're clamping to and it won't let it spin. 
a uh, really nice zip tie. <laughs> I uh, learned about these. I won a tractor race. Um, check it out. YouTube King of the Trimmers. Uh, subscribe to Heavy Metal Concepts. Uh, he does some awesome film and work, but we had a blast. Uh, Griplock was a sponsor there, so you definitely want to check them out. I won some of these, and I'm using them, and I absolutely love them. And the fact that they're reusable is amazing. Um, so now I need to go to the front fitting, and then I'm going to run that over to the stock I'm a little fat for the skid plate here. Wow. <laughs> so that's going to run up to the fuel pump here. So I got to take this old uh, inlet one off and then I can run this line. Uh, definitely had way more line than I needed. I ordered the extra just in case. I'm thinking this is more for like an F550 total four door crew cab with a long ass wheelbase for like a dump truck or something. So uh, next time definitely didn't need to get the long uh, hose. So if you didn't order this kit yet and you've got a midship tank, probably don't need that long hose. So, all right, I will uh, get started on this and show you how that looks. Then we'll get the filter on there and fire her up. Okay, so we've run our fuel line from the housing to the fuel filter. So now it's time to put the filter on and give it a test fire. Uh, so right now, I'm going to go take that filter and fill it with diesel from a transfer tank so I don't put it on dry. Highly recommended whenever changing any fuel filter that uh, sits vertical like this. Okay, so we primed the filter, filled it with fuel on a transfer tank. Uh, now I'm, I've got my fuel valves open, so I'm ready to go give it a test start. So I'm going to cycle the key. listening for the fuel pump right now. I made sure this was really low before I brought it in, as you can see. I hear the fuel pump priming. Okay, I'm gonna cycle it one more time. Now we're gonna fire her up. So we've successfully installed the Hutch Mod and the Harpoon Mod. Um, ran it, tested it, checked for leaks. All my fittings are looking good. Um, before I put the bed back on, I pressure washed it. Now I'm gonna undercoat it with fluid film uh, just to protect it. And um, that's all, then I'm gonna put the bed back on. So I know I didn't show you how to take it off, so you can figure out how to put it back on or maybe put a flatbed on, whatever you wanna do. Maybe run it like this, put some taillights sideways with some zip ties, that'd be pretty cool. Um, so you're good to go. And I'm back. I uh, drove cross country, got a haircut and a beard cut, as you can tell. Um, so we got a little bit over 5,000 miles now on the truck since I put in the filter. So I'm gonna get underneath with a clean mason jar and uh, we're gonna check out what kind of crap got into here on the road trip. So I did go cross country, I went from New Jersey to Ohio to Idaho, and along the way I came across some slow fuel pumps, which usually means their filters are dirty, which means there's dirt, but uh, also want to check, you know, here the quality of what this filter's picked up out of the tank, because now we don't have the screen in the tank, we don't have the filters in the tank, we've just got this inline filter here, so I'm going to drain a little bit out into this glass and we'll see how it looks.
in a rut. So I definitely saw water come out at first. Still smells like diesel, so that's a good thing. It's not salsa anymore. But not too much dirt in there, so that's really nice. A little bit at the bottom, swirling around. I'm gonna let it sit for a little while, see if it separates any water and fuel. All right, so we let this sit for a couple hours now, and luckily no water in there, but uh, we definitely had a little dirt and sediment that was in the tank from a couple Phillips, but it's good to know that that filter in there is cleaning that out. So along with the hutch mod, we did the harpoon mod. I'm actually able to get an extra five gallons in the tank uh, as well. So that was really nice. I got 438 miles on a tank the other day. Um, and that was down to a quarter. It could have gone a lot more, probably 500 miles on the tank. Um, pulling like 18.8 on the highway, 15 and a half around town with some of the other stuff I've done. So overall, I'm really happy with this, uh, the driven diesel hutch mod and uh, hopefully this video is helpful for you when you put yours in and hopefully you're getting the same results thanks for watching like and subscribe